Hello everyone. Today I'm excited to showcase another fascinating device, the GPD Win 5. We previously gave you a brief hands-on preview of an engineering prototype of this machine on Channel Draw, which helped you gain a basic understanding of it. Now, we're fortunate enough to have gotten our hands on a version that's very close to the final retail version. This gives us the chance to thoroughly test certain metrics we couldn't before, especially its battery life. And also noise level, along with screen quality, these are points that everyone is quite concerned and sensitive about. This handheld device is also the only one currently on the market featuring the AMD Strix Halo platform. This means it comes equipped with a powerful 40CU integrated graphics unit, essentially delivering discrete graphics performance. So, how complete and polished is this machine now? And to what extent can this integrated GPU perform? on such a mini handheld. In this video today, we're bringing you a pretty comprehensive review. First, let's take a look at the device's appearance. This time, the GPD Win 5 features an entirely new design, and compared to the Win 4, its overall size is larger. The Win 4 had a 6-inch screen, but the Win 5 has expanded to 7 inches. Additionally, the top and bottom bezels are narrower than the Win 4's, increasing the screen-to-body ratio. However, one notable difference from the Win 4 is the removal of the sliding keyboard design, which will make typing it might be a little more troublesome. This is, of course, a compromise made to accommodate a platform like AMD Strix Halo. Moreover, the entire appearance has been thoroughly redesigned this time, and the power button's placement has also been re-engineered. Let's take a quick look. First, let's check the interfaces. On the top, there's a DC power port. This is because the AMD Strix Halo platform cannot be sufficiently powered by a 100 watt Type-C port. It includes a dedicated 180 watt power adapter. Additionally, the top features a 3.5 millimeter jack, a practical Type-A port, and a USB 4 port. At the bottom, there is a 10 gigabits per second Type-C port, and that's all. Oh wait, I forgot two more ports. There's a TF card slot here, and at the bottom, a mini PCIe port, which allows for an extra SSD to be installed. Like a TF card, but it actually operates on a PCIe X1 SSD, which is considerably quicker than a TF card. This is also a rather novel design. Next, let's turn our attention to the front. The main thing I want to discuss about the GPD Win 5's front this time is its two joysticks. They're quite low in height. And many might be thinking, are low-profile joysticks similar to those on the Switch going to have a subpar feel? But its travel distance is quite substantial, as you can probably discern when I give it a little wiggle. Its travel is on par with devices that feature much taller joysticks. Let me grab another device for a quick comparison. This is the Lenovo Legion Go 2, another flagship handheld gaming device that recently hit the market. You can observe the height of its joystick. It's essentially twice the height of the Win 5s twice the height as you can all see. Now let's compare the travel distance. The Win 5's travel is this significant. When comparing travel, just observe the angle of deviation to the right. You'll notice the Win 5 shifts by about 30 degrees, whereas the ROG handheld might not even reach 30 degrees. Therefore, the tactile sensation of the two joysticks is quite similar. This implies that the Win 5, despite having such a low-profile joystick, still manages to achieve a comparable feel. I really like the feel of these low-profile joysticks. They're great. Shorter sticks mean less protrusion in the bag, making it more convenient to store. The Win 5's ABXY buttons use traditional conductive silicone. Listen to the click sound. It can be a little noisy, so if you're in a quiet place or an office environment, you might want to consider that. The D-pad also uses conductive silicone, but the feel is more like a dome switch. Let me play the sound for you. Then, the two most significant improvements on the front are, first, the power button has been relocated from the side to the A side. The benefit is that it now supports fingerprint recognition, and there's also an illuminated ring surrounding it. This can display the current status of the device. Secondly, on its right side, there's a small mini touchpad. For those accustomed to using such small touchpads, it's quite convenient for performing precise clicks. Now let's turn to the back of the device. You'll notice the dual fan intake, which is essential for ensuring its 70 watt cooling capability. Additionally, on the back, there are two back buttons, and lastly, its LT and RT buttons support both linear and nonlinear trigger switching. When switched to the nonlinear trigger, let me demonstrate the click sound and tactile feel for you. It's a micro switch button, much like the sound and feel of a mouse button. If I switch down to the linear trigger, it becomes a traditional linear trigger. So that sums up the overall picture for this handheld console. Overall, I think its design aligns well with the ergonomic design principles expected from a portable device. The slanted button layout makes it quite comfortable for thumb placement, and it also incorporates micro switch LB and RB buttons. The tactile feedback is genuinely quite good. Finally, we must discuss its optional accessory. The handheld device itself does not come with a battery. 
As you can imagine, this year, in order to fit the AMD Strix Halo platform into a handheld, we had to eliminate the sliding keyboard and even the battery to make it feasible. However, they thoughtfully included an 80 watt hour external battery. Next, let's look at what our channel focuses on the most. And that is the weight. The device itself, without a battery, has an official weight of 590 grams. It's actually 591 grams, so basically identical to the official spec. Now, with the battery, which is officially listed at 350 grams, let's see if it's actually 350 grams. It's 355 grams, an overstatement of 5 grams from the advertised weight. Together, that totals 946 grams. At 946 grams, it is unequivocally the heaviest 7-inch handheld without exception. This weight cannot be reduced. Playing with it plugged in is clearly its typical usage scenario. In that instance, the 590 gram weight is relatively light for a 7-inch handheld. Of course, this comparison might seem a bit unfair. Let's take a look at the Lenovo Legion Go handheld for a moment. This particular device features an 8.8-inch screen, which is notably larger, and it weighs 933 grams. So once you factor in the battery, the Win 5 actually comes in at a similar weight to the Legion Go. A weight. The Legend Go with its 74 watt hour battery is quite similar in battery size, but its screen is considerably larger. So all in all, with its battery, the Win 5 is undeniably on the heavier side for a handheld. Yet if you take out the battery, I think it feels quite light and pleasant to hold. Thus, I believe the Win 5's choice not to integrate the battery internally, opting instead for an an external battery is a smart solution as it ensures a relatively lightweight feel when you're playing while plugged in. Next, let's compare the screens and speakers. Today's contender for comparison is the Lenovo Legion Go 2, a recently released flagship handheld. It features an 8.8-inch 1920x1200-120Hz OLED screen, which is a rather top-tier display. It's a rather top-tier screen, but it is 8.8 .8 inches. To the left is today's main focus, the GPD Win 5, which features a 1920x1080, 120Hz LCD screen. Its official brightness rating is 500 nits, and it measures 7.0 inches, appearing considerably smaller by comparison. Now we will proceed with testing at 100% brightness and approximately 70 decibels of volume. Let us officially begin. First, you will hear the audio emanating from the Win 5. Now the Lenovo Legion Go 2. So, what are your thoughts on the screen and speaker's performance? Feel free to discuss it in the comments. Let's start with the screen. We'll display the specs for everyone. The Win 5 screen has an official brightness rating of 500 nits. In full screen mode, it's slightly under 500 nits, measured at around 480. However, the 10% window local brightness does reach 500 nits, so it aligns with the stated specifications. And for an LCD screen, its color calibration is notably excellent. You can observe that its performance is quite similar to an OLED screen with HDR activated. Nevertheless, an OLED remains an OLED. Its contrast ratio, coupled with HDR video support, will inherently surpass that of an LCD. Yet for individuals whose eyes are particularly sensitive, for users sensitive to OLED displays, an LCD still offers many advantages. Particularly for a handheld device, which involves long periods of continuous use, an LCD provides significant benefits. Secondly, let's talk about the speakers. First, an important point is that this Win 5 can reach 70 decibels using only about 30% of its volume. 
It's 100% volume. It can reach approximately 100 decibels, which is extremely loud. I suspect this might be due to an untuned state. While its overall audio performance at 30% volume is currently normal, without any distortion or peculiar problems, I still sense that its full potential hasn't been realized. This is because GPD usually incorporates DTS tuning, and I'm unsure if this specific device includes it. Has it. I just feel like it might have even more potential waiting to be unleashed. In terms of overall audio performance, there's a slight difference compared to the stereo on that other device. The low frequencies are somewhat lacking, but considering its overall size is much smaller than that stereo unit, a difference in speakers is quite understandable. Next, let's examine the stress test performance. First, we'll look at the stress test power consumption. It holds steady at 70 watts, a perfectly straight line with no fluctuations. The temperature? It stabilizes around 75 to 76 degrees. Now let's hear the noise level. Right at the device, it's 52 decibels. Now I'll move a bit further away to about where a person would be. 